this isn't just going to be a typical unboxing video, I promise. I'll also cover some interesting facts and a couple of tips for collimation because it can be quite tricky to collimate these telescopes and uh, some dimensions and weights. I've got my calipers, rulers, scales already. So let's get to it. So I've got the carbon fiber version here, which is about 400 grams lighter than the, the rolled metal tube version. This is 5.2 kilograms, I believe. And the, the, the metal tube one is 5.6 kilograms. Okay, so that is everything. Let's move that out of the way. These are bigger than I remember. <laughs> the extension rings. So the extension rings you put on the back between the telescope and the focuser to reach focus with different bits of equipment. So these have two hyperbolic mirrors in them. They're quite hard to manufacture and they can be a little bit tricky to collimate, but once they're collimated, they're, they tend to hold collimation well, especially the carbon fiber tube one because carbon fibers are very stable material. So it's gonna help with keeping the focus and the collimation by having a carbon fiber version of this. But the downside will be that carbon fiber is quite a good insulator compared to metal so it will take a little bit longer to cool and acclimatize to outside temperatures if you take this from indoors to outdoors it might take a bit longer for the primary mirror to sort of cool so let's have a look down the business end these tend to have quite a big secondary mirror the housing for the secondary mirror looks to be around about 70 millimeters by eye maybe a bit less 68 now to collimate these I'd only touch these three outer screws on the secondary mirror don't touch the middle one because that's going to affect how close the secondary mirror is to the primary mirror and that's set from the factory and once you go down that road it's difficult to come back all you want to do is control the tilt via these three outer screws like a bar stool adjusting one at a time to sort of tilt it in relation to the primary mirror. Now, these Crayford focuses on the back, it's rotatable by the way, they're not the best. There's an upgrade, there's a few upgrade options available. It's okay to get going with. I will get a tilt plate and I will get an upgrade focus at some point and I will put a dew shield on the front as well. Now, I didn't buy a dew shield at the time of getting this because um, the one with a notch in it wasn't in stock, so I might make one and then cut a notch out of it for the dovetail. It's got a standard 44mm wide Vixen dovetail that runs the whole length of the tube, and you can buy a kit to put another rail on top as well. The 8-inch version comes with a rail on top already. Let's give this a bit of a weigh and just make sure that the measurements are right for the weight. Now this is saying 4.5 kilograms, but maybe the 5.2 is when all the extension rings are on and everything. This is the same design as the Hubble Space Telescope and they're very popular for professional telescopes, this design, because they're coma free, they're chromatic aberration free, they're spherical aberration free. One option would be to put a corrector on it. Um, an interesting option would be the, the TSCCD47, which will reduce it down to F6 from F9, because this is quite slow at F9, so gonna need quite long exposure times. Now, I'm gonna be using an ASI 533 Pro with this, and that's gonna give quite a small field of view and about 0.6 art seconds resolution, which might be a little bit oversampled, but with, with the telecompressor on, it brings it up to about 0.81 arc second resolution, which will be fine at about 920 millimeters. The length of the tube is, to where the focuser starts, is about 15 and three quarter inches or 40 centimeters. And if you want to know for adding a dew shield, 
just shy of seven and three quarter inches or get this right 19 and a half centimeters yeah 19 and a half centimeters for the tube diameter the length of the dovetail is 12 and three quarters of inches or 32 and a half centimeters I'm just going to put the dust cap back on. I'll get this set up on the Warpastron WD-17 mount. Uh, first of all though, I'm going to collimate it on a star, I'll probably pop it on my EQ5 and just use an eyepiece visually and then make adjustments to the secondary mirror tilt if it needs a bit of collimation. I had the eight inch model of this to begin with, the, the metal tube eight inch model, and I collimated it with my Cheshire collimator. And when I went out, it looked perfect by the Cheshire, but when I went out under the stars, it was, it was clearly out of collimation. So I'm not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna leave it as is and check it on a star and just make small adjustments to one screw at a time on the secondary mirror, but not the middle screw, the outer three screws and just the ones that control the tilt because the primary mirror is fixed so I shouldn't really need to touch that that should hold quite well from the factory even though it's been traveling a lot the only other thing to consider is the focus of sag but I can get a tilt plate at a later date to improve the collimation further but yeah I'm going to defocus a star in the middle of an eyepiece and check that the secondary mirror is bang in the middle of that defocus disc of the star and just make small adjustments one at a time to one of the screws if it makes it worse put that screw back if it makes it better continue with that screw that kind of iterative process but I think the important thing is to collimate on the star and not use your in my case affordable Cheshire eyepiece because these need a little bit more than that. The ultimate collimation tool is a defocus star. I think that's what I'm trying to say here. Okay, th there's a couple of things I just want to add. Um, firstly, the, um, the dust cap is just ridiculously loose on these. I think this is a bit of a GSO thing in general. These are manufactured by GSO. So I'm going to put a bit of felt around there or something just so that stays in place a bit better. Uh, I guess also I didn't really point out what these screws, oh it's fallen off. The Crayford focuser is basically a friction focuser so if you tighten that screw at the bottom it will grip and you can move it and I'd recommend having that fairly tight to keep this as rigid as possible. And then we've got a locking screw on top and that'll just lock the focuser in place quite securely. And then we've got this ring here which allows you to turn to orientate for your for your image and at the back of the focuser we have got this 2 inch to 1.25 inch adapter so you can use 2 inch accessories or 1.25 inch accessories also it comes with a finder and it's normal to have just one of these bolts on there to lock it in place and then the other ones kind of I think you could like if you want something on there permanently you could tighten that blanking grub screw up to keep it in place like permanently so it doesn't get not loose like that one could or you could take that out and put another one of these grub screws in and if you want to do that these are so the OD on that's four millimeters and the length of the thread is about nine millimeters overall length is 18.6 millimeters there's another set of blanking screws there so you could put another finder shoe that side as well and we've also got these bolts here for the optional rail kit that's available for this as well may or may not get that i'll see whether it comes in handy or not my plan is to because it's quite back heavy and you've got the extension rings that go on the back my plan is to put my guide scope right at the front mount it so the the mount saddle grips it right at the back and then have my guide scope slung underneath to sort of act as a counterweight as well as a guider that's my plan and then have a 
have a dew shield on it as well to add a bit more weight at the front. That'll be the overall length roughly. <laughs> that dust cap. That's definitely the Achilles heel of it so far, I think. Right, so that's how it looks with the extension. Two of the three extension rings on. So it's going to be quite back heavy. We'll see how that goes. Cool, cap back on. And I'll see everyone when we've got this mounted on the Warpastron mount or on my EQ5 for collimation. We'll probably do that first, actually. We'll probably pop it on the EQ5, check collimation next when it's clear and dark. And just to see how it is out of the box collimation wise. And here we are setting up a couple of nights later. It's fairly clear, although there is a very bright moon nearly overhead and I'm shining my camera down the eyepiece to have a look at a defocused star to see where that secondary mirror shadow is sitting. If it's bang middle, it means it's collimated. If it's off to one side, as you can see, it is very slightly here, then we do need to tweak that collimation. So I will in a moment pop round and make some adjustments to the secondary mirror. But before we do that, here is how it looks on the EQ5 mount. This is just a basic motor driven mount, so no deep sky imaging tonight, just purely collimation and a quick test. So here's the time lapse of me just popping back and forth, making small adjustments with an Allen key to the secondary mirror to just get that uh, collimation real dial, dialed in you have to have it really precise with an RC if it's just off by a small amount you'll notice it when you try and focus those stars so once I was dialed in with my collimation I jumped over to sharp cap to capture some strangely enough some lunar images because I was set up ready to go and the moon was right there I don't think I realized I was punched in uh, to a smaller region of interest at this point. Uh, so here I am sort of darting around the moon, capturing different close-ups of uh, craters. Um, but in a moment I will realise that I can actually open up the sensor to the full size and I'll capture a much larger area of the moon to show you in a moment as well. So I'm just capturing sort of three, four, five thousand frames per little section of the moon here and I'll show you the results of that on screen once it's post-processed but not the kind of telescope you would normally use for lunar imaging I don't think but the field of view is quite flat so from that standpoint it seems to do a good job. I think the main complaint with these for lunar and planetary is the fact that you've got quite a large secondary mirror to uh, reduce contrast and scatter light so it's not the best from a contrast point of view but I was able to pull out quite a lot of contrast with post-processing which I'll show you in a moment so here we are with the full region of interest of the sensor the full sensor width basically you can fit about half the moon in there and I've got Tycho center stage just tweaking dialing in that focus before I hit another imaging run and um, this time at a much slower frame rate because it's capturing the whole sensor so I think I only got about 500 frames for this next uh, stacked image but there we have it as always thanks very much to my channel members and my patrons for all the support you give the channel and to also anyone who made it this far through the video it's quite a long video hope you enjoyed it if you did maybe consider subscribing and hitting the like button all the usual stuff we ask you to do and thanks for watching catch you later